Hello everyone. Uh, I just want to read uh, just a few verses, I think four, and I'm going to be in Psalms 25 of the King James Version of the Bible. I'm going to read verses 12 through 15, I think. It said, What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. Talk about that man that feareth the Lord. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Wouldn't you like to know secrets? Secrets of this life and, and of things to come? They're, in the one, they're with the Lord. The ones that fear the Lord. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord. For he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Uh, the, the, it's, it's about choices. Uh, you know, I think it was Joshua twenty four fifteen said, Choose ye this day whom you will serve. And I think he went on to say, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Life is about choices. George Jones uh, co-wrote a song, I think, and, and sang this song about choices. And uh, we have many choices in this life, and some of them are life-altering choices. Uh, to make sound decisions, you, you have to have sound information. You have to have clarity. I was thinking about uh, my brother, Dwayne, that passed away last year. He, he was one of the uh, most decisive men I've ever met, and I guess the other one would have been my dad. Uh, I didn't take after them. It's It's been painful for me to make decisions, and I've had to learn along the way. But those two uh, people in my life, they really were decisive. Um, you might have to slow down when you come to a destiny decision and have clarity. Uh, you, you, you can't afford to make a permanent decision over a temporary situation, and that's what we do so many other times like Esau did when he traded his birthright for a bowl of soup. Some people have the philosophy, and it seems to be pretty popular, that when you don't know what to do, just do something. Well, that's, that's something wrong with that. That's what's wrong with us now. People not knowing what to do and just doing something and just hoping it'll work. That's not the way I want to come about my decisions. Uh, we hurry up and make decisions that change the next 20, 30 years of our life. Not only change our life, but have uh, repercussions for our children and the people that follow us. I know people that's lost, uh, you talk to them about the plan of salvation and, and heaven and hell, and, and they'll sit there and they'll say, I'm not going to make a decision. Uh, but they just made one. A no decision is a decision at any rate. We, we make the wrong decisions, and if we just waited and took the time to gather our information and settle ourselves in and settle ourselves down, we could have made a better decision. Just like somebody that's thinking about buying a house and say, uh, I don't need an inspection, and I'm not going to get an appraisal. I'll just trust the Lord. Well, the Lord wants you to do all you can with your decisions and what you can't figure out, come to him. Uh, but don't just bother him with every little thing that you can do on your own, but those des life's destiny decisions, he wants you to come to him. Lord, teach me what to choose. Give me clarity. Uh, it all seems so jumbled up, Lord. Let me have clarity about what I should uh, ask you for. Don't Lord help me not to help me to make right decisions so I don't get off course and I can stay on the, on schedule and not be delayed getting to my my destiny and my purpose that I might not get lost Lord help me when you make decisions good or bad it affects your kids and your family and <laughs> it goes down generation it's like an earthquake that has tremors. It rumbles on for years and years, even after you have died and gone on. Decisions have consequences. 
It's the ripple effect. If you uh, throw a rock into a little uh, pond or whatever, it's going to ripple, and it's going to finally get to the other side. When we fear God, this scripture said, he said that when we fear God, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. When we fear God, he lets us in on secrets. He, uh, he gives us privileged information. And God helps you understand that you couldn't understand on your own. The meek are the ones that's teachable. Uh, the people who don't think that they know everything. Man, you cannot hardly teach somebody that thinks they know everything. And I don't want to be that way. I've, I've told you before, I've learned from people that other people just ignored. Children and, and, and all kind of people. You know, it's like a GPS. You get in the car and you don't know which way you're going. You're dependent on it, GPS. And you go miles and the voice, mine's a she, I think. And she don't say nothing for miles. Uh, but she will come back on there. You think she never is going to come back on, but she'll come back on there when you make a turn. She don't save nothing just all the time. It's only when you make the turn. And that's the way God is. He's not going to talk to you every minute about everything. It's only when you're going to make those life destiny decisions, those turns. And uh, if, if God hadn't said anything to you for a while, do like you do with a GPS. Just, just keep going straight ahead until God tells you something. I knew a man, he was a little comical, and his wife told him, said, I want to go somewhere I've never been before. And he said, uh, have you tried the kitchen? And so uh, I, I laughed over that through the years. God don't talk to you all the time. He don't talk to me all the time. Just when you need to make those des destiny decisions. You know, the GPS don't talk all the time and say everything about everything. It don't say it's too hot, roll your windows down, or, or turn that AC on. or um, It only speaks to our decisions, our turns. That's when it's valuable. And, you know, in your whole lifetime, you won't have but just a few destiny decisions you have a lot of decisions but those that's going to change the course of your life your spiritual life your family's life uh, so you just don't have a destiny decision every day some decisions can't be made through knowledge which is information but you have to be made through wisdom like solomon which is revelation uh, that's the way solomon guided those two women the two that slept in the same bed and one slept on her baby and they both said it was theirs. And he said, bring me a sword. That wasn't information. There was nothing he could go to to find a precedent for that. But that was revelation. And we, you better believe that we have a, a say-so in our destiny and in our, the way our story is and the way our story ends. Uh, as I said, some people seem to think that the Lord talks to them all the time. I've heard them make references like that. The Lord told me this, and the Lord told me that. Well, he doesn't me. Uh, I, th I think he talks to me when I need to know on some of the destiny decisions. Uh, I heard a story about somebody that received salvation, and uh, they went a couple of days or so, and they couldn't, they couldn't feel the Lord. They couldn't hear his voice. And uh, this person got up and testified and said, The Lord has been with me all day. And that person said, well, no wonder I couldn't find him. He was with her all day today. He can be with you and be with me all at the same time. Uh, we need to, we need, we have all have destiny decisions and we need to hear the voice of the Lord. If you don't think the Lord still speaks to people, you've got to me too late because I, I have heard him. When I, when I first started living for the Lord, 40 over 43 years ago, uh, when he called me, I, it's soon be 43 years I've been living for him, but he called me and I was going down this road and I came to a four-way stop and I heard him. 
He said, I'm not fooling with you anymore. You can come or you can go. I had my wife here and two children in the back. And uh, I thought it came through my ear. And I looked at her and I could tell she did not hear that voice. But, um, but I've had him speak to me. Uh, it didn't come through here. It come through here. So it takes an humble man. He speaks to humble people. And he, had, he speaks to people that have a need to know. You know, uh, sort of like you and your kids. You don't tell them everything until the time they mature and they have a need to know. I've enjoyed this today. I hope you got something out of it. And I uh, hope to be back with you soon. And I'm trying to, at this point in time, make uh, send out one every morning. And uh, so may the Lord bless you until we see each other very soon.